Hi class, I'm Dr. April Strom. Thanks for joining us today. And in this video, what we're gonna look at is another technique for integration, specifically here, integration by partial fractions. Okay. There's different scenarios we can have when we're integrating partial fractions. So the scenario I have for us here for the integral of five divided by x plus two times an x minus three there in that denominator is what we call distinct linear factors here in that denominator. So these are each linear factors. They're distinct, meaning I only have one of them. I don't have an exponent having some sort of multiplicity. I just have distinct linear factors. So it puts this problem in a category of its own in terms of integration by partial fractions. Now, before I can actually make progress on tackling this integration, here's what I have to actually do. I need to take my integrand as I have it set up here, and I need to break apart this fraction. So right now I have five divided by x plus two times x minus three. And I want to break apart this one fraction into two separate fractions. Now, when I do that, the trick here is I don't know what the numerators are that would accompany this. I do know, however, that whatever my denominators here are, when I get a common denominator from these two individual fractions, they need to create this one denominator here of x plus two, x minus three. So what I will plan to do is I'll make one of these denominators an x plus two, I'll make the other denominator an x minus three. Now just kind of pause for a second here and thinking about when I'm actually adding a couple of fractions together or subtracting for that matter, we need to have that common denominator. And what we'll do is actually multiply those denominators together. So if I take my x plus two times an x minus three, well, I do have what I started with, okay? So I'm kind of decomposing this big fraction, if you will but I don't know what are the appropriate numerators here that when I add these two fractions together, I would get five, okay? So what we do is we say, all right, let's let this numerator be called A and let's let this one be called B. Okay, you could call them whatever you want, but we'll call them A and B. It would not be okay to call it an X and something else because we already have X to represent something completely different, okay? So our chore here is that we wanna be able to somehow solve this rational equation, what in effect we have built here, so that I know what A and B are such that this statement is true. So I have to do a lot of algebra to figure that out. Once we get what A and B are, we will put it back into this new equivalent side of this equation and then return back to my integral to actually integrate because currently I can't integrate with what I have now. Okay, so thinking way back to your good old algebra, maybe college algebra days or intermediate algebra days, we have to solve this rational equation and what we will plan to do is we would like to quote unquote, clear the fraction in this equation. We're gonna clear the fraction. And we're gonna do that using this technique. I'm gonna multiply both sides of my equation by this denominator here, my x plus two times an x minus three, okay? And I'm gonna do that on this, the right-hand side as well. So I'm gonna take this particular fraction and I'm gonna multiply it by an x plus two times an x minus three and the next fraction, multiply it by an x plus two times an x minus three, okay? By doing so, what that allows me to do is actually simplify and hopefully some things actually divide out. So I have x plus two divides out here with this x plus two x minus three divides out here with this x minus three. What I have left over is now just five equals. So on the left-hand side, five remains. On the right-hand side, I need to go fraction by fraction. So I have this denominator, x plus two, divides out with this uh, x plus two factor over here, leaving me with the a that was here in my denominator for which I have no idea just yet what it represents then it can, it's gonna be multiplied by this x minus three that stays. 
and then I replicate this process for the second fraction that's over here. So I have an x minus 3 that divides out with this x minus 3 factor. What remains is b times x plus 2. So that whole process is called clearing the fraction. I have a rational equation, aka something that has fractions in it, and I can clear out those fractions by just using the technique of multiplying by that common denominator. So now I have a new equation. So what we would like to do here is just continue solving. I want to go ahead and distribute my A on both of these terms here in this first linear factor. Distribute the B in the same way. So I have now 5 equals A times X, so AX. A times negative 3, so negative 3A, plus distribute the B on my next linear factor, so plus BX, and then plus 2 times B. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I continue making progress in terms of figuring out what A is and what B is? So here's our challenge. What we will do is we'll rearrange this equation such that these two terms are together, and you'll see what I'm going to do for those guys. And then I will like put these two terms here together. I'd like to sort of organize things so that the stuff that has x's are side by side, the stuff that doesn't also group together. So here we have now on the left hand side, 5 is equal to ax plus bx. Again, just grouping things sort of side by side together that are kind of like terms. And then we have minus 3a plus 2b. Okay, we're making some progress. All right, by doing this, I can now visibly see that I have two terms that both contain an x. Let's go ahead and factor out the x in those two terms. So I now have 5 is equal to, I'm going to write it this way, a plus b with an x behind it. Instead of normally we like factor things out in front, um, which would be fine, but here I've got a reason. I want that X behind it because I want that A and that B together because those are just constants. They're gonna be numbers that we're gonna figure out what they are. And then we're eventually gonna be adding them together and imagining what number precedes this X that's here. And then these two terms don't contain an X. So I'm just gonna group those together. I'm gonna say plus, and then wrap that negative inside here, inside these parentheses. So negative 3a plus my 2b. Okay, so I just sort of did some um, intelligent regrouping, if you will, to kind of make the next step hopefully make more sense. Now, imagine we've got this equation here. What we're saying here is 5 equals this stuff on the right-hand side. 5 is just a constant number by itself, right? There's no variables here. Well, this, if you knew what A and B were, being just constants here, this uh, inside parentheses here will also just give you some number. Over here, we will have some number times the X. We don't have an X, though, on the left-hand side. Well, technically, we do. Technically speaking, I can throw it in and say 0X plus five still equals this stuff on the right-hand side. So the equality aspect to this equation is still true. Zero X is still zero plus five is still five. But I've written this in such a way because now here is a magical moment where I want to say, all right, I'm going to say the A plus the B, the coefficient in front of the X is going to be equivalent to this coefficient in front of the X. So I'm going to match certain things up. So I have A plus B is going to be equal to zero. I'm going to make miniature equations out of this. So I have that zero is equal to A plus B. Okay, fabulous. And then now I can match up this set of uh, expressions over here in the parentheses with the five. So I now have another equation of negative, or actually let me put five here below the zero. Five is equal to negative three A plus two B. Okay, I'm gonna box this, not that we're done, but what this whole process has revealed to us is at least a set of equations called a system of equations that in fact have two variables, an A and a B. Now, 
we're calling them variables right now because they're unknowns that we need to solve for. Eventually, they're going to be numbers once we go through that process. So now I have to think, how do I solve a system of equations? I have two equations and two unknowns, the A and the B. Well, there's a variety of techniques that you can use right here. One could be solved by matrices, right? You could actually construct a matrix here and use matrix op operations to figure out what A and B are. What I'm gonna do actually is go through the algebra, just because some of us are a little rusty on some of the algebra techniques, so I wanna showcase that aspect of it. All right, so within the algebra, you have um, graphing, that could be a technique. It's really hard though to see with the graphing exactly where things are gonna be solutions for these, this, these two equations. Alternatively, you could use substitution or another method called elimination. So those are all of your options. All right, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of substitution here. I see I have a really nice equation, zero equals A plus B. Let's rearrange that one equation and solve for, let's say A. You could do it for B as well, but I'll choose A. If I solve for A, I can rearrange this by just subtracting the B over. So I have now negative B equals A. Okay, so at least I have now a relationship between A and B. A is negative B. I can now go to my second equation that I have here and plug in what I know A to be, the negative B. So when I handle that, I can now write my equation instead of five equals negative three A plus two B, I'll say five is equal to negative three times A, but A is now negative B, so I can replace A with a negative B and carry on, plus two times the B. So by doing that, I, I collapsed my two equations into one equation with one unknown. And if I just continue kind of making my way through solving this equation, I can figure out what B is. So here we go, five is equal to, when I multiply and distribute here with those negatives, I have three B positive plus the two B and continue on, five is equal to five B, which must mean that B is actually exactly one. When I divide both sides by five, I get that B is equal to one. Okay, fabulous. So that's one of the values. Um, for the numerator of my partial fraction that I was decomposing into, but I don't know what A is, but no worries. I can come back over here and I can plug into this equation, negative B equals A. And since I know that B is one, plug in, negative one is equal to A. Now I have the second numerator. So all of this, believe it or not, was just this technique initially of finding a partial fraction, taking a fraction here and decomposing it into two separate fractions, and then using our techniques of algebra to solve for what those numerators are. So now once I have that set up, I have to go all the way back to my original problem here. Recall way back when, our whole mission is to integrate this fraction here. Well, what we've done with all of this beautiful algebra is come up with an equivalent integrand here instead of this uh, uh, fraction that we have. So let me come back here and replace, instead of having five divided by x plus two times an x minus three, let's replace that one fraction with our two fractions with the appropriate new numerators that I just found. So we have the integral of, instead of a over x plus two, we know a is negative one. So this is negative one over x plus two dx. And I will add to that the integral of the second fraction, b over x minus three, but I know b to be a one. So I have one over x minus three. And of course, dx there in each of those. Now you noticed, I took my one integrand, I have now two integrands with the new numerators here, and I also simultaneously broke the integral symbol into two separate integrals. So I did all of that right here in this one step. We have these properties of integration that allow us to do that, so everything is okay in terms of equality. 
And then now I just need to figure out, all right, what is the integral of this one fraction with a separate linear factor all on its own? So the negative here in the numerator, let's go ahead and pull that out. So we end up with a negative one uh, on the outside or just negative integral of one over x plus two dx. Plus there's no negatives or constants to pull out here. So I'll just rewrite this, the integral of one over x minus three dx. And then now we just have to remember um, when we have one over x plus two or one over any linear factor, and I'm trying to find the integral of that type of expression, it will always come back as a natural log of that denominator, natural log of the absolute value of x plus two in this case. Don't forget the negative that you already had out front. So the integral, a negative integral of one over x plus two is negative natural log absolute value of x plus two. Carry on, this next piece here, I have plus, same setup, I've got one over an x minus three, that x minus three is a linear factor again. Find its integral is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus three. And because this was an indefinite integral with no boundaries from the beginning, I need to go ahead and say plus C there on the end. You can't forget about that possible constant. That constant could be zero, but it could be a bunch of other things. So we account for it in this way. So I now have in full the integral of five divided by x plus two times an x minus three in that denominator is equal to the negative natural log of absolute value of x plus two plus the natural log absolute value of x minus three plus c. This is the whole thing, okay? All right, I hope you enjoyed this particular video. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to click on our logo for Advantage to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.